All right, so I have a minute um, to make a second follow-up video to the signal routing video. Uh, I'm just going to make it really quick. Um, if you watch my other videos, you'll have seen most of the uh, nuts and bolts of this. Um, I just want to kind of give you an idea on how to work match EQ really quickly. Um, so what we've got is, I'm going to start with the main stage here. Now, if you looked at my other video, you saw the routing. As we said, we come in input 5. So here in the audio effects block, oh, this, by the way, real quick, this is the main stage. What I did was I took with the concert from main stage that has like the mic and backing track, and I just deleted everything. So all I have is my main metronome, which you can't delete, and this one track. That's it. That's all that's in here. Um, anyway, so I come in input 5. Um, audio effects here, you had match EQ and mono, because, again, Helix only does impulse responses in mono, so it doesn't matter. Um, and then what this... This is a neat piece of software. What this does is it takes your current file, like your current guitar sound, and it takes a reference guitar sound, and then it creates an EQ curve to make this one match this one as closely as possible. So what I have is I have two files here that I copied, uh, that I made earlier today in GarageBand. This one is um, Voltage Queen with no cab. Okay, so this I'm going to put into my current file. So I'm assuming, all right, so we'll drop this right here. All you got to do is drop it right there, boom. And that's the EQ curve of the Voltage Queen amplifier without a cabinet. This one is the Voltage Queen with the Cali 4 cab, just the stock settings. And I'll we'll drop that there. So now that is just the, the, Cali, the Voltage Queen and the Cali 4 cab. And now if we hit the EQ curve and we press match, it takes this file and tries to match it with that file. And it creates an EQ curve that does it. Having played with this a little bit, I'm going to set the smoothing to minimal because I find it sounds a little better to my ears in my studio. Your, your mileage may vary on this. So now what we basically have is we have the signal coming in here, going through the EQ curve, and coming back out 1 and 2. Now if we go back to our Helix really right here really quick, we have this patch set I showed you in the other video. Here's our routing. And... We go here to our impulse response utility, and you sweep it, and you get your impulse, and you crop it down, and you end up with this. And I'm not going to do the sweep because I showed that in other videos. I'm just trying to be quick here. Now, if I go to HX Edit, and I go to this one here, and let's set this to the Voltage Queen. Where are you, Voltage Queen? You're up top. Voltage Queen, and I set this one here to a Cali 4. Again, both of those were stock, and this impulse response, I already made it, um, and I, I loaded it into location 18, which is a Cali 4 test. All right. So now, what we got is I can switch with my foot switch back and forth between the two cabs. So this is the Voltage Queen with the Cali 4 cab. And this is the impulse response. Uh, it's fairly close. I don't. I wouldn't call it a really perfect copy because um, it's just an EQ curve. It's not an impulse response. An impulse response is a little bit of a different thing. It's an impulse response that acts only as an EQ curve. It's not a um, a dynamic thing with reverb and phasing and all that kind of stuff that impulse responses are kind of good at doing. Um, at any rate, um, this is I would the way I would use this um, would really be if I wanted if I got my guitar tone close, my patch pretty close. I want to sound like Eddie Van Halen on Eruption, and I got close. Then you, you, then you take the Eruption recording, just some isolated guitars, drop that file in, drop your guitar file in. Let it make a curve EQ and then add the impulse response at the end of your patch just to help smooth it out. That's probably the best way to utilize this.